Today we'll see a really cute sundress, white straps, bra friendly, nice fit and also a top with the same pattern. One of them is made from a thrifted shirt. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and today I'm sharing two versions of the Reynolds top and dress from Helen's Closet. This is a pattern I purchased when it was released and it was a pattern that won on one of the polls I put up on my Patreon page. Over there every month I do a full sew along in a lot of detail. I think it's a pattern I would repeat many times. In this opportunity I have two. So you can see the line out there. It's quite classic. You know, you would have seen these dresses in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, you know. I've been seeing this style for a long time and I really like it because it's very wearable. It's a sundress but the straps are quite wide and quite bra friendly so you can be comfortable you don't have to worry about having like special undergarments for this piece love the square neckline on the front and the back easy to wear because you can just pull it on over your head you don't need any closure methods it's got a nice amount of ease boxy-ish but not that much because there are some shaping features here like bra studs and the seam at the center does have some shaping it's not just straight so i really appreciate that and it's finished with facings inside those facings are top stitched and you can make this in a crop length and then you have a dress length that's above the knee and a longer one those will have slits on the sides with mitered corners that already come in the pattern just ready to sew you don't have to calculate that or do it yourself like i do it in a lot of patterns and it just hangs it's just nice and breezy i made a dress for the sew along on patreon and just recently i made a top using a thrifted shirt but more about that later with this one you can use a large variety of woven fabrics it's not designed for knit fabrics so i wouldn't try to make it in a knit fabric you can use easy to work with more structured ones cotton cotton blends you'll find different weights there usually more structured look my favorite cotton is cotton lawn and if i can find that cotton linen blend i really like that as well you could make this in theory out of a quilting cotton but i think it would stand away from your body a little bit for the dress i would make the top version in a quilting cotton but not the dress i just think it's much too structured and then you have linen and linen blends those are really easy to work with as well and it'll give you a more of a structured look there's no feature here that needs everything to drape and i think with the top you can get away with doing it in more structured fabrics in my opinion so my top is made out of a linen cotton blend from a shirt I thrifted and I really like the result. It's really crisp, it's really nice. Now you can use fabrics that are a little drapier. I would keep them medium weight, I would say. I wouldn't wanna make this in a rayon that's super, super light. So my version for the dress is a rayon linen blend, medium weight, it's got a really nice texture and there's 13% linen in the blend. It's just really nice. <laughs> I love the print as well. A rayon twill would work really well. A tensile twill, I would use those fabrics for this. Sizing goes from zero to 34 US up to a 62 inch hip. There's two options here for the sewing bust cup sizes. So up to size 22, you'll find a B cup. And then there's a little bit of an overlap of sizes because from size 12 to 34, you have a D cup. In my case, I have a C cup, so I'm in the middle. I know the B cup version is not gonna work for me. The D cup is just too much volume. So I, I need to do some bust adjustment. And there are quite a few pattern companies that do this B and D cup situation. And I always have to do an adjustment. Think about your body proportions. I need a size larger for my hips. So it makes sense for me to use the size 16 with the B cup and do the full bust adjustment because that's gonna give me a C cup and also a tiny bit of ease at the hips where I need it. Because if you think, okay, why don't you just do the 16 with a D cup and do a small bust adjustment? That takes away width from the hips. So if you are larger on the top area and have a smaller hip, maybe it would be better for you to do a small bust adjustment if you're in these overlap type of sizes. But that wasn't my case. So I just took mine from a 16, added one extra bust cup, which is just half an inch full bust adjustment, makes the dart a little wider, makes it one inch wider across the whole front and a tad longer in the center front. Just a refresher, I do have a very, very in-depth video about full bust adjustments on the channel. You have a partial armhole right there with this type of design, but in essence, it's the same thing. So let's see. We don't have a complete neckline here. We have a partial armhole, but that doesn't really change the way that you do the full bust adjustment. I drew a line straight through the dart. I extended the line going through the dart by one inch. That is closer to where the actual bust 
cities because that's a little further away and from there I drew a line all the way down and that line is parallel here to the center front and from there I drew a diagonal line towards the armhole and I drew a dot here the seam allowance for this pattern is five eighths of an inch so I'm just going to do that little line right there so I'm going to cut into that dot right here that's going to be a little hinge point and then I'm going to cut all the way from the bottom up to that dot right there then I'm going to continue from that dot up to that dot there and now I'm going to open up the dot from here up to the point here These are the same lines you would cut if you were doing a small bust adjustment. I'm going to do a full bust adjustment which means I'm going to open up my pattern piece and because I'm just doing it for one cup size from a B to a C I just need to spread this out evenly by half an inch. Okay so that's how my piece is going to look. I'm going to take some paper and fill up the gap over there and over there and I want to show you at the bottom that I'm going to need to lengthen this center front piece. You can see that I'm missing some length here so I'm just going to do a cut line here and just bring that down. So then I'm going to have to scoot that down to match so that everything's even there and I'm going to need to add some paper behind there. Here is all the bust dart area. You can see this was the original bust height and now it's lowered. It's about 5 eighths of an inch lower right here. That's always going to happen with a full bust adjustment and with a small bust adjustment it's going to go up higher. What I've done is just redraw this and just fix this dart because it had sort of been split in half and lengthened closer to the apex but I do want it to stay away from the apex. So that is the dot and then I just redrew the lines. I also kept going these lines over here so that everything would match on the side and Usually if I had a complete pattern where I could measure the neckline and know exactly how this is going to be on the body, I would already be raising or lowering this. But because I need to figure out the strap length and there's other things at play here, I would rather just sew it like it is, do the test garment and see from there how much this bust that needs to come down. I mean, it might not need to. I won't know until I sew it. I like the amount of ease that was drafted into the pattern. So up here on the upper chest, the bust area, you just have two inches of positive ease, which is really good. You want that because you don't want gaping under the arms right here or at the, at the neckline. It has to be a nice close fit. But then as you get to the waist and the hips, you have a nice amount of ease, six inches there. So because I did my full bust adjustment that added one extra inch to the front, I get one extra inch of ease. When I'm getting ready to make a garment, I usually do most of the fitting adjustments on the paper first, the ones that I can figure out on my own with flat pattern measurements and such. And in this case, I did the full bust adjustment, but that's all I could do really. I really did need to make a test garment to figure out the dart placement. I can't measure that well because I have to gauge the length of the strap. So whenever I'm going to make any design like this with straps, I really want to do a quick test garment that's non-wearable where I could just figure everything out. And so let's see the feet of mine. I had the sneaky suspicion that this was going to be low here, it could reveal in too much skin, which is the case for most of these styles of patterns. I always just want a closer fit, but it's better to see it on the body. So let's see. I've sewn a quick muslin. I didn't sew the facings on. That's just a waste of time, but I did sew the seam allowances there so that I know that that would be the finished neckline. I've pinned my straps right there with the correct seam allowance front and back. So this is how the dress would fit if I made it as is. I've got the same thing at the back. And actually the bust dart after doing the full bust adjustment is correctly placed for me. So I wouldn't need to lower it. The only problem here, <laughs> and I knew this was going to happen because it happens every single time, is that this is just too much skin revealing, it's not showing my bra, my bra's underneath. But I don't want all of this area showing, I like a more closer fit. And this is how it would be finished right here where that seam is. So I like this depth of the neckline, I, I think this depth is okay. I wouldn't want my neckline up to here, <laughs> that wouldn't be right. So I just want to play with this area. Basically from here I just want to curve and add to my pattern piece about an inch and a quarter and do the same over there which means I'll have to redraw the facings but everything below here is perfect. The bust that is perfect, the waist, the seam at the back, it goes in at the small of my back and the length of the dress is perfect. It's just this, I want more cover and I'm always happy to come and change this and just add and I'll just add to the paper and then I'll be happy to cut out the fabric. Another option that some of you might think is why don't I just shorten the straps? Well, if I do that, 
and just bring this up for the cover that I want. This neckline is going to end up at my clavicles and that's not going to make sense. And then my bust tight is going to be all the way above the bust. So I don't think that is the correct way to go for this one. So I'm basically going to keep the original strap length. I'm going to keep everything the same. I'm just going to add to this and just raise it up from here because I definitely don't want to be showing all that skin there. I just never like that look. I want all this as covered as possible as much as you can with being comfortable. I want you to see at the bottom, <laughs> I didn't sew the slits or the mitered corners, but I did sew up the hem allowance, which is two inches, and it's exactly above my knee, so I don't have to change the pattern. If I did want to make it longer or shorter, I would want to do that above where the pattern piece widens for the mitered corners because you have that extra seam allowance there. So this is definitely not something you can change after the fact and take away from the hem because then you'll mess up all the mitered corners. So I think it was important to do the full muslin for the length that I want and not just a little crop top like that because I think the length is also important to figure out. As predicted, it's just too much skin for me. I don't feel comfortable. I want more cover right here under the arms. So I know I have to raise that. I still needed to change the front facing anyway because I've done the full bust adjustment. So let's see how I quickly just change that armhole, just raised it all up in the front and the back. Easy peasy, you can do it too if you like more coverage like I do. If you like to show a bit more skin, then it's all good. And I love that because I'm sewing, I can customize all of these little things to the way that I wanna wear the garment where I'm gonna feel most comfortable while still keeping the same-ish look and the design. I'm still using the same pattern. I'm gonna take my ruler and just keep that same shape that's going on there and just extend it by one and a quarter inches. That is three centimeters in metric. And I'm just gonna go ahead and raise that, draw my line there, just using a regular pen for this. And then to blend back into the shape on the top, I'm gonna to use the curves on my ruler. I don't want to extend that all the way, so I can't just extend the whole curve by the same amount. I do wanna keep that as per the original, and I'm gonna go down by 5 8 where the seam allowance is and make a mark. And that is where I want to start curving in and just making this line as best as it can. So I'm just gonna take these little curves inside my ruler. You can use a French curve until you find a curve that you like. You can also draw this by hand if you want. I would usually just draw it by hand, but I'm using a ruler here to show you what are the possible choices you can have here. Okay, here is my new shape for the front. Obviously, this original facing is not gonna work anymore. Also, with doing that full bust adjustment, the shape of the armhole has changed a little. Not the length of it at the seam line, but the shape. So I still needed to draw a new facing anyway. Yeah, this is just not going to work, so I'm just going to create a brand new one by putting paper underneath and tracing, and it's going to be pretty easy. I want to mimic what I did with the front with the back, obviously, they do have to match, so I'm just going to take some paper and put it behind there and just tape it down the same way. I'm also going to take my ruler, just keep going with the same shape that you see there, and just extend it upwards by one and a quarter inches or three centimeters. Also, take down the 5 8 of an inch seam allowance right there and start blending in and drawing a curve right there. So this will be my new back piece and now I just have to create a back facing for this piece as well. When I align this facing here, you can see that it doesn't go all the way to the edge of the paper. That is because the facing is cut on the fold, but the actual dress does have a center back seam, so they're not supposed to match in that area, but they're supposed to match everywhere else. Now, because the back has only had the change in that partial armhole, I'm going to keep this original facing piece and just add the same amount of paper that I added. So that'll be easy. But for the front, I'll have to create a new facing piece. Okay, so here is my new facing piece for the back. Super easy. I just added the same pink paper. They are identical pieces. Now, that area is longer now. It doesn't matter. It's just longer because I extended it upwards, but it's keeping that original shape on the bottom, which is what I wanted to keep. Here is the front. I've placed my facing on top. That is not going to match, but I'm just going to scoot it over to keep the same length there. And I'm going to start drawing that shape there just for a little bit just so I can blend back into the curve, pivot that facing back to its original shape on the top and keep drawing that. Just keep tracing the shapes using a black pen here. So when I remove the facing, I'm going to have the drawing on the actual pattern piece of the facing that I want now. That includes the full bust adjustment piece and raising that armhole. It's super easy. I'm just going to take a piece of paper and put it behind. I'm going to match this new paper there at the center front 
And then on the sides, I can just trace my new piece, the same as on the top area of the facing. But then for the inner lines, I'm gonna use a tracing wheel and just mark the shape there. That little mark will be transferred to the paper that I have behind and what I'm gonna use for my facing. I can see the dots, so then I'm just gonna draw these and this is gonna be my new facing for the front piece. Now when I align these facing pieces on the sides of them, they are going to match. That area is gonna be longer, but it doesn't matter. It's just higher, it won't change anything. What is important is that you keep the curve of the facing on the lower edge, because that ensures that this is gonna go above the bust, which is the only type of facing that I find acceptable for styles like this. For me, it's either this or just fully lining. I don't want a longer facing that will cut through the bust. For sewing, I'm gonna show you the pattern pieces and I'm gonna focus on showing you how to sew the mitered corners. It's really, really cool. I think it makes it super easy because on the inside you have a double fold with a mitered corner. That might be a little bit different. The full sew along is on Patreon. That is exclusive content, so I'm not gonna post the full sew along over here. But I will leave you some helpful videos down below that are linked where I've sewn similar garments with the similar construction method here where you have a facing and a strap coming from the neckline. Those pieces of fabric over there are the front and the back pieces. There's not many pieces to the Reynolds top and dress. In this piece of fabric that I have here, I've laid a layer of interfacing and I'm gonna interface this first and this is where I'm gonna get my front, my back facing and my straps. In the instructions, it suggests you just interface half of the strap, but I don't like doing that. I just prefer to interface the whole one so it's really sturdy. This fabric is not really heavyweight either so I'm quite happy to interface the whole thing. So I'll just get that fused on and then I'll just cut out my pieces um, doing block fusing like I always do. I've created an extended piece for my facing. I find it more accurate because you don't have to deal with the fold and a little bit of excess that you might have there. And it's just easier. I also find it so much easier to just cut once and you know that the shape is going to be accurate and exactly the shape it has to be hasn't had the chance to deform. So there's one of the facing pieces and you can see it's got the exact same shape and size. It hasn't deformed and it was just so easy to do with an extended piece and with the fabric already interfaced. I'm gonna do the same thing for the back facing and for the straps. Here are the pattern pieces for the Reynolds top and dress. I'm making the knee length version. You know, there's a longer one if you want or it can be short over here. Not many pieces as you can see. Over here we have the back and there is a center back seam right there. I do have it pinned already. And here is the facing. Now I've cheated with the facing to be able to get it out of my fabric. I do have an extra seam right there. It should be on the fold. Here are the strap. I decided to interface them completely, not just not half lengthwise as was suggested by the pattern. I'd rather just have sturdy strap. I do that all the time. <laughs> and over there we have the front. The front is cut on the fold and so is the facing that you can see right there. This is the area where the bust that is that I made larger by increasing a cup size. And over here at the bottom, you have these shapes, the curved edge, and then these slanted areas. That's all got to do with the mitered corners that have already been made there. It's gonna be easier to sew. This is the needle that I'm gonna be using to sew this rayon linen blend. There's only 13% linen in here but the fabric is medium weight so I think this is good 90 slash 14. I've got regular polyester thread there it's strong it'll last so when I'm stay stitching I'll be using 3.0 stitch length same as when I'm sewing the general seams that works well with my machine and if there's any place where there's a bit of bulk maybe some side seams when I'm under stitching I'll just increase it to 3.5 for a tiny little bit but most of it will be this if I'm doing a guide stitch that I'm gonna remove later I'll increase that to four so that's just easy to remove I'm gonna do some memory creases for the hem and the mitered corners later I think it is helpful to do this in the beginning and then just forget about it so this is the shape that you will get at the bottom both for the front and the back so that's the side seam you have that curved edge then you have this little short straight edge this edge is where we need to fold in by a quarter of an inch and then one and three quarters like this but if you measure from the edge in in total the hem allowance is two inches and same as this bottom edge right there we also want to press in by a quarter of an inch and then from that folded edge measure one and three quarters and press again I think it's easy to do if you do a guide stitch it's just easier in my opinion so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use my quarter inch presser foot first increase my stitch length so that it, this is easy to remove later and we'll just get these done and out of the way so I'll be doing all the guide stitches and then head over to the iron I would not want to be 
eyeballing, just folding in a quarter of an inch, just eyeballing it. I'd rather have it be really precise. So I think guide stitching works and the quarter of an inch presser fold is amazing. The next line that from the edge is two inches in, I don't really have a good reference to just go ahead and sew that on the sewing machine. So I've gone with my ruler and measured it and marked it with a friction pen. You can see the faint red line right there, same as over here. You can see that this is the 5.8 seam allowance coming from the side and it just keeps going like this, but from here to there, it's two inches. You have that curved section. And over here, you can have a little bit of an overlap of the lines that's supposed to be like that. So now my line drawn with a friction pen, that's what I'm gonna use to do the guide stitch. And if you ask me, why are you gonna do the guide stitch if you have the line? I've done the line on the wrong side and I can't really see it. If I wanna press, I really can't see it accurately because I'll be folding it that way. I want to see it on this side. That's why I'm using the navy thread because I can see it. I've done this on the back for both pieces and I'll be doing the same thing for the front. And so now my guide stitch is gonna happen right there and my line on the fabric is gonna be the guide. I'm gonna press the tiny one first. I can see and feel that thread there so I know that I'm pressing it exactly at a quarter of an inch and then the next one here I can see my guide stitch and feel it. So we have to do that four more times. <laughs> Along the bottom we have the same thing so I'm also gonna do that. I'm gonna take my time try not to burn myself. That's the first fold and then the second one. So once these are set into the fabric we're just gonna let them extend. We're not gonna be doing the hem now. This is just for later. There are four mated corners and we had already pressed this in by a quarter of an inch and the second fold. So the memory creases are there, but we just need to extend this. And this slanted edge, all we need to do is put it right sides together here, keeping the fold right there, that first fold, but just matching it up and aligning all of this. Now all we have to do is sew this with 3 8 seam allowance. Okay, all we have to do now is flip this and we're gonna get a super neat mitered corner with the fold already there. So all these memory creases make this super easy. It's all ready. So I'm gonna do three more of these. And then all we have to do is just top stitch the hem down, including these little slits. And these little slits will have this shape here when we top stitch. So there'll be a pivot there, a pivot there, a pivot there. And that's how the slits are gonna be finished. And it's gonna be a super neat little mitered corner there. This is the first one. You can see this print is super vibrant. It's really nice. It's a very nice weight for this. I like to interface the whole strap, not just half of it, because I want a sturdy strap. That's just me. Nice square neckline. The facing is kept inside with understitching as always, so you can't see it because it's black. And for this one, because it's a print and it's black, I did decide to top stitch the facing down. So you can't see that, but the facing is fully top stitched, so it's never going to move or go anywhere. You just pull it on and it's always nice and fixed. Love that. I would think about top stitching with a solid though. I don't think it would look very nice, just my opinion. This is the front and here is my basta, but you can't see it. The back has a seam. I wouldn't try to get rid of it for a dress. I think it's really necessary. It does give you nice shaping. You know, I, I mentioned it's boxy-ish, but not really that much because of these shaping features. I always appreciate that because we do have shape in the front and the back of us. So if the fabric can follow that, I'm, I'm all in. So there is the center back seam right there. Side seams, the facing, the bust start right there. That's customized to my C cup. Otherwise the bust start would be a little smaller. Four mitered corners right there. There's some memory creases done in the beginning to get these folds to stay there. And it's so much easier to just pick that up later. So you see that doing that mitered corner is not something you can fix from the hem down if you want to change the length of the dress. So that's why I included the full dress length in my test garment because it's something I wanted to determine ahead of time if I needed to make it longer or shorter. I needed to do that adjustment before all that mitered corner business. So love it. 
Let's see, it's styled a few ways. Here is my Reynolds dress from Helen's Closet, size 16 at the bust, and then with a full bust adjustment to take it from a B to a C. That gives me a tiny bit of extra ease at the waist and hips, which is perfect. I have the above the knee length. I really love this rayon linen blend. The coverage on this sundress is amazing. I think the style is really classic. On the sides, you have little vents with mitered corners and you have a square neckline with wide straps that cover your bra. Here you can see the ease at the waist is just so comfy. Slip it on over your head and wear it. I love this length. I wouldn't have made a longer one. <laughs> then up closer, you can see the feet of the neckline I did raise that armhole just customizing it to my personal preference for coverage I think it covers any bra you don't need special undergarments to wear this I really love this design it's really neat inside with facings in this case I did top stitch the facings down here you can see my buster and this is just so so lovely and I would make so many of these if I had more time it's a really wearable style and I'm really really happy with this one just styled on its own but you'll see other alternatives with a third piece on top just to make it a little different There is a little green in my print so I just decided to pick up that color with every single accessory here. <laughs> I have green block heel sandals, a green bag and my green smitten jacket in linen from Pattern Emporium. I really like this crop length, I think it works with this style of dress. I think it looks great although if I wanted more waist definition I'd wear a belt under it or just button the jacket up like you see it there because that brings it in at the waist immediately. I could have done the same thing with red, I think those are the only two colours I would have tried to pick up from the print because they are the most apparent ones. The other colours that you see there are more tertiary, it gives me quite a few alternatives for styling. <laughs> my Reynolds dress again this time with my sleeveless metro blazer in a suede this is a top right wear on repeat it's a pattern by love notions I just left the sleeves off and the edges raw I think it gives it a little shaping because the neckline is super simple underneath the big neckline of the blazer looks nice it's not overcrowded up there and I could use any footwear you'll be surprised <laughs> these are black fashion tennis shoes I love them with the white sole and I could be so comfy being a tourist and walking around everywhere and feeling really stylish with my colorful dress and my little blazer of course I could swap the tennis shoes and just change it to a sandal with a block heel and I'd elevate the look immediately the footwear is always up for debate and there's always so many things you can do I've been really inspired to grab my shirts out of a little box I have full of deconstructed shirts I've purchased in thrift shops. I love it here because resellers, they send you the garment washed, you can smell the fabric softener. It's just such a nice experience compared to like whatever you find at the actual thrift shop. Sometimes it doesn't smell too good. But I found really good pieces and I found a shirt made out of cotton linen blend. Beautiful, just beautiful. I haven't found fabric like this to buy on the bolt. So whenever I find an unusual fabric that I love the look of and I know it's going to be good quality, for me it's really worth to buy the shirt, keep an original feature here and there. So let's see how I got a top out of this one. I just want you to see the detail of this linen. You can really see the fibers, it's like really natural looking. I love the color, the, the feel of it is amazing. And I can't find fabric like this. I can't find this exact type of fabric to buy. And I'm always looking for fabrics that are unique like this when I look for used garments. This is my shirt. It's a really beautiful beige linen fabric. And I have partially deconstructed it. I've taken the sleeves off. This is the yoke and I have already cut out the back. And from this front piece here, I'm going to keep the button placket and leave it as a detail at the back. So where the button holes are, that is going to be the center of the piece. I'm going to put my Reynolds top back piece right there, just aligned right here. This pattern has quite a bit of shaping on the back so it goes in at the waist, it comes out and I think that's fine. I made my dress like that but for this one because that is straight I'm just going to eliminate that 
So at the top here, I'm just gonna fold it in by five eighths because that's a seam allowance. Then it tapers to sort of nothing here at the waist. I'm just taking that grain line arrow as a reference so I keep the same distance so that is perfectly straight. So if you see there, there are the button holes. That is where I'm going to align this center. And then that's how I'm gonna end up with everything as per the original. I already know what length I want to make my top. So I'm pretty sure I have enough fabric here to make the back piece of the Reynolds. This is the back of the shirt and I'm not gonna have enough width here to cut my front piece on the fold. I'm missing just a tad, about an inch there on the top section. It's fine at the hips. So what I'm gonna do is cut this in half here and I'm gonna add a piece of fabric in the center. And I got this rectangle from the sleeve. This is exactly the length that I need for this extension. And I'm gonna do some vertical seams, pin tuck type situation, just to give it a little bit of interest and make it a little bit more intentional rather than just adding a piece in the center, which I think could look pretty boring. And it might look like I did that because I didn't have enough fabric so let me show you I've drawn the lines on my fabric but I'll put them on the screen so you can see this is the center of my rectangle and I've marked it with a line from the center outwards I made a line 5 eighths of an inch this way 5 eighths of an inch that way and then the next line is an inch further away an inch further away so I'm basically going to have two pin tucks, one here, one there on this side, and on the other side I'm going to have another one and another one, two pin tucks on each side. All I do for these pin tucks is fold this wrong sides together so I can see my red line right there, and then with that right there on the fold, then I sew this at a quarter of an inch, so there's four of them. And then I'm going to attach this in the middle of these other pieces, that's one way I'm going to extend this, and then I'll be able to cut my front on the fold, but it'll have this detail right there. This is the other sleeve and I have enough fabric to cut my straps from here. What I don't have fabric for are for my facings. So I don't really mind, I'll just go into my stash and look for some scraps, something in the similar weight and color. Here I'm at the sewing machine and I'm getting ready to sew these pin tucks. And you can see that on each of these four lines I'm going to sew, I've got the line right on the fold there. So on each of these four lines, that is exactly what's on the fold here and I've put a few pins just to hold it together. And now the quarter inch press of foot is doing a really great job in keeping these neat. So once I've done the first one, I go ahead and pin the second one. And I've got four of these to do. Don't get confused about the line I marked in the middle. That's not a pin tuck. That was just for me to know what the center of this rectangle panel was. That was just a line I made to measure the two pin tucks I wanted on each side. So here I have my pin tucks done. You can see my red line I drawn in the middle and then two pin tucks to each of these sides. I'm gonna press these going out like that it's going to look super neat here you can see this middle panel with the pin tuck details with the bigger pieces sewn onto the sides and that extends the center i top stitched it on the edge just to make it look intentional and i think it looks super pretty now before pressing these i did mark my center line with thread because i'd done my marks with a friction pen that's just so i know where the center is after placing this really neatly on the table i can take my pattern piece and place the center along my basted mark right there and that's going to be one half I'm going to mark the outline with a friction pen super carefully. You can see all that volume coming out because of the dart. The dart's always going to give you that volume coming out like that because it's trued. And then I'm just going to take my pattern piece, flip it to the other side, mark it again, and I'll have my extended front piece there. You saw that little pin tuck detail I did in the center front there to be able to add that panel to the other sides to get a full front piece. So I love the look of that. So I hope that was not too confusing. You know, you can use any distance between your pin tucks. You know, what I've shown you is just what I did. And then when I was going to cut my straps out of a sleeve that I had there, I figured out this, the sleeve was wide enough for me to cut wider straps here and do that same exact detail from the pin tucks on the straps. So I did the same thing. I cut a wider strap. I marked the middle, marked all the little lines, you know, from the middle out. Same distance, same everything. And I did the exact same detail on the strap. So look at this. I mean, I'm just so happy with this. And this is totally freestyle sewing. It's not like I planned to do it. You know, all of this came about as I was trying to figure out how to best use the fabric in the shirt. So this is the detail in the front. Pin tuck, pin tuck, pin tuck, pin tuck. Love it so much. And then I thought, why not just replicate that over here? Strap on the other side and flip it. And I got this beautiful, beautiful strap. So precious. I mean, I can't be happier. These two details together just look so beautiful and so unique for a basic top like this. I think these details really shine with this type of fabric. So, oh my gosh, I can't even, I can't even. I'm just so happy with how that turned out. 
And then at the back, you see I kept the original front placket of the shirt. I did change the buttons because original shirts don't usually have nice buttons, but these are very nice, so put those on there. All the rest is the same. I've got the basta. This is not the original length of the top. The top is super, super cropped. So this one's about two and a half inches longer than the top length. That one does not have the mitered corner though in the original pattern. The way I determine the length I want is by putting on my dress, standing in the mirror, looking at myself and then putting a pin where I want the hem to be. Then I go to the pattern and mark it there. It's fail proof, it never fails when I've already made the garment. It's so much easier. For the front facing, I found a scrap of linen that I'd made a blazer from years ago. It was only enough to do the front facing and I had enough from the shirt to make the back facing out of the same material. The facing was sewn and flipped. This is not functional, you don't need it. It's just for pretty, you just slide it on. So yeah, let's see this one on. This is my second Reynolds. This time it's a top. It's a little longer than the original length here. And I've got my sleigh all day skirt. I think the colors pair together and I needed a light color to go over the girt. I like this high hip length for a fitted design like this. And you can see in the center, I have the pin tuck details. I added that with an extra panel. The hem looks slightly longer on the back. That was just me using the most of my fabric. I might actually go ahead and make the back a little shorter to match the front. I did keep the original button plug it from the shirt I used it at the back and I love the details on the front the square neckline I added some pin tucks on the scraps as well you see that up closer finished neatly with facings inside and the button placket at the back is not functional it's just decorative the facing closes it up there's my thick strap that covers any bra I've got the same pin tuck details I have in the center of the top I really love that and I think refashioning brings out these creative ideas where I just want to use up every single bit of the fabric. I really love it. It's the only top I have in this type of tone color. The fabric is a linen cotton blend. It's lovely, lovely to wear. It's so beautiful and I really enjoyed making it. I think this is a really great pattern for warmer weather. I wish I'd had time to make more, more tops, more dresses. I probably will because this is a style that I really, really enjoy, where I can, you know, have my arms out and feel like I'm wearing a sundress, but I'm still really covered up and comfortable. You can find this at Helen's Closet. I don't have an affiliate link. They don't have an affiliate program. So if you like it and you buy it, it's all for them. I just sold it because I like it and not everything I do here on the channel has an affiliate link. I wish they did though, <laughs> but yeah, it's a great pattern. I recommend, it's really nice. And I think it can suit everyone, everyone. You know, make it whatever length you want, use different fabrics, make it your own, customize it if you want to. It's really good. That's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you soon. Bye.